Last time, we learned about the difference between open loop and feedback control, and we set up the most simple kind of feedback control called on-off control. When we ran this control algorithm, we found that our control was unstable. Today, we will learn two ways to improve the stability of our control. The first method is to continue using on-off control, but adjust the trade-off between speed, stability, and accuracy. When we are implementing a control algorithm, these three things are the primary measures of how good our control is. Speed refers to how fast the slider moves from its start position to its ending position. Stability has to do with the smoothness of the motion. We would like the slider to not have to do a lot of jittering around the final position. When the joint goes past its target point and then comes back, that is referred to as overshoot. Overshoot is generally undesirable. Think about the motion of animatronics of the past. That characteristic robotic motion is overshoot. Humans don't do that when they move. Bad robots do. If the joint keeps oscillating around its target position indefinitely, that is called instability, and that is really bad. You will eventually break robots by doing that. The third measure of motion control goodness is accuracy. Accuracy refers to how little error there is in the positioning. For example, if we are trying to move to position 1000 in our rack and pinion, do we get to exactly position 1000 or do we come to a stop at some other position like 1010 or something like that? Now, to help us observe these three measures of goodness of control, let's start by artificially making our control worse than it is. And we're only going to do that in the second positioning, where we're moving to position 2000. Right now, we know that our control is unstable because we can see the motor just jittering like crazy after the slider reaches its target position but we could make this instability more visible if we slow down the control loop. Down at the bottom of this second loop where we're moving to target position 2, change the time delay that we wait at the end of the loop from 1 millisecond to 10 milliseconds. And you'll also need to change the 1 to 10 here where we're incrementing the time variable. So now we'll be able to clearly see the instability, at least in the second move, the one that moves to the position 2000. Let's program the PSOC and observe this motion. The steps that you want to go through to test this are first plug in the PSOC, then click program the PSOC, and then after the program finishes, slide the slider all the way to its zero position, then hit the reset button on the PSOC, and then plug in the external power supply. And watch what happens. The first position we haven't changed at all, but watch what happens here. Now we can see the instability occurring very clearly here. Let's go back to our code and see if we can change anything to improve the stability. If we want to stay with the same type of control, in this case on-off, and we want to improve one of the three goals, speed, stability, or accuracy, we are going to need to give up a little bit on one or two of the other two goals. For example, we could improve the stability of this control by giving up some accuracy. Right now, our code says that we will stop the motor only if the position is exactly equal to the target position. Let's add in a little bit of allowable error here. Here, we're going to allow the motor to stop if it's correct within plus or minus 10 counts of the target position instead of making the motor only turn off if it's exactly at the target position. 
program the PSOC and let's see what happens. Make sure the external power supply is unplugged, pull the slider all the way to the right, hit the reset button, and then plug in the power supply. We want to watch what happens in the second position. It's still unstable, but perhaps less than it was before. Let's try giving up a little bit more accuracy. Change both of these 10s to 20s. This will make us turn off the motor if the position is plus or minus 20. Program the PSOC. Then slide the slider all the way to the right reset the PSOC, and then plug in the external power supply. Let's watch the second move. It's still not stable. Let's try reducing the accuracy even more. Back in the code, let's change the 20s to 30s. Program the PSOC, slide the slider all the way to the right, hit the reset button, and then plug in the external power supply. This time the motion is stable. It still has overshoot though. The slider oscillated for a little while and then it came to a stop. This is stable motion, but it's still not ideal. Besides reducing the accuracy of the motion, there's another way that we can improve stability. That is to compromise on the speed. Back in the code here, let's change the 100 compare value to 80. This will reduce the speed of the motion. Program the PSOC. Slide the slider all the way to the right. Hit the reset button on the PSOC and then plug in the external power supply. Let's watch the second motion now. Have we stabilized the motion yet? That was better yet, but it still has some oscillations. Back in our code, let's change the 80% speed to 60. Program the PSOC. Slide the slider all the way to the right. Reset the PSOC and then plug in the power supply. This motion is very stable. There were hardly any oscillations at all. Now go back in the code and let's increase the accuracy. Now that we've stabilized the motion by using both less accuracy and less speed, let's see what happens when we make the motion more accurate. Slide the slider, hit the reset button, plug in the PSOC. we got a little bit less stability. Let's change the accuracy back to 10. What do you predict will happen here? If we increase the accuracy, what would you think would happen with the stability?
every time we make a gain in one of the goals, speed, stability, or accuracy, we give up a little in one of the others. So as we increased the accuracy, we gave up a little bit more stability. In this video, we learned one of the two possible ways to improve our control response. It is to adjust the trade-off between speed, stability, and accuracy. In the next video, we'll learn the second way to improve our control response. That is to try using a different control algorithm. In the next video, we'll be looking at one linear control algorithm called proportional control.